Hello again everyone, I'm Tatiana, this is my tiny zoo, and today I'll be showing you how to set up a Herpstat Precision Thermostat. This tutorial will work with any of the Herpstat systems, whether you have the original, the 2, the 4, or the 6, because the instructions are pretty much the same, so let's get straight into it. First things first, when you open up the box, everything is packaged very nicely. The temperature probes are right on top. I have four of them right here, so we're going to take those out and set them aside for now. They also have a wall plug here and the instruction manual. And at the very bottom is the system itself, so let's pull that out. You can see on the back of it, it has four outlets for any heating elements I will use and four output plugs for my temperature probes. Now that everything's unpacked, let's get started. I'm including a clip of my system booting up for the first time, so you can see what that looks like. Once everything loads in, you can see that it's throwing me an error message, because I have my light plugged in, but I haven't attached the temperature probe yet. We're gonna ignore that for now, so that I can show you how to set up your initial settings. Press Enter to access the main menu. Then, use the plus or minus buttons until your arrow is next to the system option. Press Enter again to select it. Here is where you can adjust your basic system settings. Select display to change your temperature mode from Fahrenheit to Celsius. I don't really know why the United States still uses Fahrenheit, but it does, so that's the setting I'll leave it on. Press enter to save your settings and go back to the previous menu. Next, let's set our system clock. Use the plus button to adjust the hour and the minus for the minutes. When you're done, press enter and move down to set the date. Use the plus and minus keys to set your month, then press enter to set the date, enter again to set the year, and enter one more time to go back to the previous menu. The last few settings are completely optional. The sounds menu will let you enable or disable the system beep during menu selection. I've edited the beep out for the sake of this video, but here's what it sounds like normally. The M reset is the master reset option, and this will reset all the settings in the device to the factory defaults. And the LCD menu will adjust the screen brightness. Now, let's exit out of the system menu and work on setting up our first heat element. When you enter into the output menu, you will see these options. First, we want to set the mode. There's heat dimming, which will adjust the voltage based on what temperature you need. According to the Herbstat manual, this is the best performing mode and the one that they recommend to most users. Pulse is basically 100% on or 100% off for a certain amount of time. And honestly, I don't really understand the cooling mode, so if someone smarter than me can explain it in the comments, I'll pin it down below. They also provided modes that are specifically for lighting if you don't need any temperature control. Personally, I'm using the Herbstat to control my temps, so I'll select the heat dimming option. Alright, now we can go back to the previous menu and move on to the day temp. Set this number to whatever temperature you want your Herbstat to regulate to. Output 1 is controlling a basking light in a blue tongue skink enclosure for me, so I need the temperature to stay around 100 degrees. Once your temperature is set, press enter and move on to setting the night temps. If you want your temperature to stay the same throughout the day and night, leave night cycle disabled. Since this controls a basking spot for me, I'm going to turn NC on and then set my nighttime drop temperature to 70 degrees. This means that the light will turn off at the time that I set it to and it will maintain a temperature of 70 degrees if it needs to turn the light on and off. Next is setting the start and end times for your night cycles. I want my heat lamp to turn off at 8.30 p.m. So I use the plus button to control the hour. The minus button controls the minutes in 15 minute intervals. Press enter to save that setting and do the same for what time you want your night cycle to end. For me, that's 8.30 AM, 12 hours on, 12 hours off. 
The last setting is ramping, which makes it so the basking spot will heat up over time, instead of blasting to 100 degrees right away. I think this simulates nature and the sun rising and setting a bit better, so I turned ramping on for 30 minutes, but it can go up as high as 10 hours. Let's exit this menu and continue finalizing our settings. The high and low alarm is next. Press enter to enable or disable your alarm. Once enabled, you can set the temperature at which you want an alarm to sound. If something goes wrong and my basking temp gets over 110 degrees, I definitely want to know about it, so that's what I set my alarm temperature to. The low alarm is the same, but the alarm will go off below a certain temperature. For example, if your bulb burns out or something similar. My low alarm was set to 65. The Herbstat manual recommends leaving the 30 minute mute on. This is because if your Herbstat turns off overnight due to the night cycle, it allows for 30 minutes of warm up time as your heating element turns back on. This way, it can warm up without immediately sounding the low temp alarm. Herbstat's manual doesn't recommend messing with the sensor adjust setting, so I left that alone. I also ignored max power, but that basically lets you adjust the maximum power level that will be sent to the heating device. The last setting is something called basking assist, which is an option included to use with basking lights as a heat source. Once the target temperature is reached, instead of turning the power off and then back on, it will continue giving reduced power to maintain the target temp. I chose to turn this setting on. That's pretty much all you need to know to get your Herbstat up and running. I went ahead and connected my basking light and set up the temp probe where I wanted it. You can see in this clip, the power percentage slowly ramps up to get the basking temperature to where it needs to be. There are still a few settings that the Herbstat has that I didn't mention in my brief tutorial. One of those is the security function. This menu lets you set a passcode that locks your device and doesn't let anyone make changes unless they input the code. Personally, I don't need this function, but if you work in a facility with a lot of staff, it might be useful. If you run into any issues with your Herbstat, they also have a hardware menu that will test all of the outputs for you. I'll run that test now just to show you. See how it's turning all the outputs on and off to make sure they work? You'll want to check and make sure all of the lights are actually turning on and off as the system runs as well. Another topic I didn't cover was humidity. Only outputs 3 and 4 have the option to regulate humidity. Outputs 1 and 2 just handle lighting and heating. It will give you similar options to input humidity ranges if that's what you're looking for. My system is only going to be controlling temperatures, so I didn't mess with the humidity options much. But if you want a quick tutorial about those functions, please let me know in the comments below. Well, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this quick Herbstat tutorial video. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I put out new videos every week. See you next time!